All right, another book review. What the CEO Wants You to Know by Ram Charan. This author was actually born in India uh, in a very, you know, poor and poor place with, you know, poverty all over. And so uh, he eventually obviously made it to, you know, to a place of success. He moved to the U.S. and uh, his family and then they kind of over the years worked themselves into a new pl and into a new uh, class and you know he, he became a CEO of several different companies and he of course uh, studies what the best CEOs do because that's what successful people do they find out who who did what they want to do and then they they take those those principles so that's what he did and he wrote this short book and it's it's packed with good information um, the first first portion of the book maybe you know a fourth of the book or so kind of talks about the similarities of a street vendor uh, you know as as they do in, in a lot of uh, places in India there's tons of like street vendors and local markets that you can go to daily to get your you know fresh produce and food and clothes and whatever but um, and you know the similarities of that street vendor or you know if you've ever been to the bigger cities like New York or something in the US there's also those you know street vendors there um, so what's the similarity between those basic you know most you know simple businesses and huge complex businesses that you know uh, kind of rule the internet today and he he kind of combs through the the simplicity of a business no matter how big it is there's always the same principles all right and then the middle portion of the book um, talks it, it's almost like a brief you know accounting book it teaches you uh, you know how to calculate your your return um, and return on different things right your return on investment um, he talks about how to increase velocity so some people are you know familiar with the idea of of you know your return on your investment is X amount but what if you turn that over multiple times in one year um, like Walmart does Walmart has something like a 360 um, day return on investment with with their tissue paper so almost every day of the year they they sell out their inventory and start over so you know if they're making even if they're only making a couple percent or one percent or something on their on their tissue paper uh, they turn it over almost every day so you know that can turn into a huge return so that when you you know when you have that type of return that velocity you can reduce the uh, margin that you make and still make a ton of money over the course of the year right because if you're gonna you're gonna make a half a percent every day that's a that's a huge return on the year so and then the last last uh, portion of the of the book is is kind of taking your new knowledge and and understanding like big companies and stock prices and um, those kind of things so it's it's only like a hundred and you know thirty pages and it's a really good book full of good things let me read some of the the principles and quotes and things in here that I that I've highlighted I won't read them all of course because I highlight too much but he, he says money making in business has three par basic parts cash generation return on a assets which is a combination of, of margin and velocity and then growth so those are the basic parts of a business and he says cash generation margin velo margin velocity return on assets growth and customers everything else about a business emanates from this nucleus so that's the that's the things to focus on right how are you generating cash uh, what's your margins how fast your velocity the return on assets and and are you are you growing what are the markets for growth and customers so take care of your customers because uh, returning customers are way more profitable and easier to to uh, get back than new customers new customers are the most expensive so everybody counts in a business he says you know he, he talks about people of every level in your company need to have information and, and kind of uh, understand this idea that everything you do everything I do in our business costs money and makes money right or 
maybe it doesn't make money, but it costs money to do it. So is it going to be is it going to be something to generate profit? And you need to uh, sometimes just inform those lower levels just for the sake of information, not to get their opinion and not to make changes, whatever, but just so that everyone's on the same page that, listen, we're all here to to earn an income for ourselves. But in order to do that, we got to make money for the business and your actions matter. Your opinions matter. Your, you know, your, your, uh, the, your efficiency matters. Uh, we need everybody's brain power. So, um, he talks a ton about the you know some of the biggest companies like GE and Walmart and um, he talks a little bit about Microsoft some of these huge companies that have found huge success and he compares companies that were similar at one time but then all of a sudden one of them overtook like Sears and Walmart were almost the same size you know several years back and then I mean today Walmart is a giant company they found a way to increase velocity and um, take care of their customers that in, in a way that Sears didn't and then they just you know expanded it in a crazy rate so once again here's like the here's the return equation that he has on oh, you can see that's too bright let's see return equals margin times velocity that's something that you need to always have in mind um, the best companies have a return on assets greater than 10% after taxes. Your return is your velocity of investment in sales divided by investment. Okay, so these are some accounting principles that you should get to know and understand so that you can really analyze your business and see where your money's going and where it's coming from. How to how to speed it up? How to how to have more cash available and less invested in you know your assets and things like. Um, he talks about Dell a ton too. Michael Dell figured out how to make computers after they were ordered, right? You have to make them fast or you're not going to get customers. So basically, he, he gets an order and within like three or four days, the computer is built and shipped. So literally, he doesn't have his cash tied up in inventory until he's already got an order for it. So then, you know, the second he pays for his computer... Uh, four days later it's shipped and he's paid as well so r literally he's like he he's made the money before he spends it so um, he's got a super fast turnaround as well um, so he can keep his cash at hand so he always has um, a knowledge of how much cash he he has and that's a huge amount and what what he needs to do for, with his business and how he can use that cash so it's a it's a really cool model and and that's an example you know before Dell people would make a computer and then try and sell it he sells it and then makes it um, making velocity meaningful many people focus on profit margin but they overlook velocity here's what makes successful CEOs different from many other executives they think about both margin and velocity this dual focus is the centerpiece of business acumen uh, just kind of reinforcing what I already said but um, Welsh has mastered, so Welsh worked for GE, he was one of the CEOs that really made GE fly, but Welsh has mastered the relationship between cash generation, margin, velocity, return on assets, growth, and customers. He knows that if a company continuously improves productivity, then margins improve, and cash is generated, then margins and velocity improve. You have the leeway to take better care of customers, thus you can get a larger share of the market and the company grows. So it's like each one kind of leads to the next. He, uh, you know, he had them set in a in kind of prioritized in order and that each one would lead to the next. And as you, you know, increase margin and increase velocity, then you have more money and cash available. And then you can afford to maybe um, treat your customers better, put some more money into customer support or, you know, when they need to return or fix a problem or whatever you uh, you know, you take that loss, but the idea is that you take care of your customer, they'll come back, they'll refer to you, that, you know, that the customer experience becomes a marketing tool and you um, boost revenue over the long term. Personality alone is not what, it, what makes a company deliver. It takes insight into how the organization really works and how to link people's actions and decisions to the priorities. He's talking about leading other people, right? So now we're into the portion of the book where big company... You don't just have this little family mom and pop shop where everyone's in on everything. 
Now you've got layers of organization. You need to hire people that have certain talents and you got to get them to all mesh and work together and use each person's talent to, uh, you know, profit the company and to, you know, so I've worked for several companies that were fairly, fairly large and had the layers of, of sludge, as I call it. Um, it's like you got to have somebody's approval to get approval to do something, right? It's like, oh my gosh, like, why can't I just go make the decision? <laughs> so that's the difficult part. Once things get big is you you know, you kind of need oversight so people don't just blow money in bad ways. But at the same time, how do you hire good talent and then empower them to use their talent? So that's really tough. And that's where good CEOs uh, are are magnificent. They, they, they identify certain talents and people that they want doing things. And then they, they empower those people to go do it. And they create a, a system where they can mesh with their colleagues who have other talents, right? So that's, it's not just a personality thing. You got to be able to, you got to have people skills, but it's not just people skills that makes a company run. You got to have kind of that business acumen as he continually says. So making group groups decisive. And he actually talks about the, you know, the, the family business that becomes, that no longer is a family business. When it's a family business, you talk about it around the dinner, dinner table. Everyone knows what's going on, what happened why we lost this customer or why we gained more customers or what piece of the business we're struggling at, right? They all know. But as an organization grows and you have dozens, if not hundreds of people working together, synchronization becomes a greater challenge. To divide responsibilities, you create an organizational structure. The moment you create that structure, the social interaction in the organization changes. So the structure can be a helpful thing, but it also has its, its downfall, right? Um, now you can hire experts in sp specific areas, but they lose that social interaction that used to happen when it was a small mom and pop. So <laughs> he talks about, I mean, lots of good ideas. I love this section. He had a lot of good ideas about uh, and examples of companies who have found a way to keep that tightness right so in walmart in the 90s every monday to wednesday some 30 regional managers went out to visit nine walmart stores and six of their competitors stores they gathered a basket of goods and compared the prices they can they were looking at customer what customers were buying what products were going out how the how the people dealt with the customers they were looking at a whole bunch of stuff and these are high level managers so Notice how many filters there are at Walmart between the regional managers and where the action is. Zero. So there's zero. Like, they don't have to ask people to gather information from other people to, to give them a report, right? They see it. What is the value of zero information filters? Time and quality. Zero delay. Zero distortion. Zero distrust. And what is happening in the honing of the senses? The skill improves with practices. So, <clears throat> They get their high-level people on the floor, interacting with customers, surveying the, the floor, the operations, how everything works. So they know exactly who and how um, things are running, right? How people are buying, what they're buying, what's the experience, what's the price, you know, how do they compare with their com competitors. Before I move on, he talks about build your business structure and then, you know, well, build your business and then build your structure as far as like how you can create that interaction. Because, you know, with online businesses and things like that, you're not going to get that one to one customer um, experience and you're not going to be able to go watch your employees bag groceries or whatever. Right. So you have to build your own social interaction network within your company. So um, it would be different for. GE or it would, I mean, it'd be dramatically different for like Microsoft or, um, <clears throat> you know, other tech companies, Adobe or whatever. How do they create their social network to keep that communication and direct, <clears throat> you know, eliminate the filters, as he says. Um, so you got to build your own 
style. Last thing I'll talk about, he says, some of you have an, the intellectual capacity to cut through complexity, but, but are indecisive or afraid of being wrong. Can you wait until all the facts are in and the picture is clearer? Here's the rub. You make a bet even when you don't make a bet. That is, by not choosing to do anything different, you are choosing the status quo. I love that. Here's the rub. You're still betting even if you're in, you know, you're not going to act because things are already on a course, things are already at play. So if you don't make a change, you're betting on what's already happening, which may be the right bet. But don't forget that it's a bet, right? Um, here's the rub. You make a bet even when you don't make a bet. That is by not choosing to do anything different, you are choosing the status quo. It's a cool book, man. I liked uh, I liked a lot in here. It literally, I mean, it's a tiny little thing. Take you, you know, an evening or two to, to read and, and really good insight. It's like a quick accounting book and then, you know, it leads into other business principles and stock prices, stock market, per, uh, you know, the P.E. ratio. You've probably heard of that a ton. And uh, if you haven't really dug into investing stock market or had to run in a, in a business that has a stock uh, or a publicly traded stock, you you might not know what P.E. is, but it's a, um, earnings per share. And it is so volatile. Like outside analysts will, will and analyze your company to kind of get this, okay, for each share that you have, you make about this much money per year. And that creates this this P/E ratio. But if you miss your projections by even a penny or two, all of a sudden your P/E ratio will drop like crazy, and it's like this big em emotional cascade that that can really run a, a company off course big time just because of the change in in the P/E ratio and all the emotional factors and social factors out there that that may or may not be realistic, but <clears throat> The, it changes your the view of your company. My throat. <clears> throat. I'm about to choke to death. So I got in this video. Um, I don't know what's going on with me. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, good book. Check it out. I'll put the link below so you can buy it off Amazon or you can go to my website and read our little review and see other books that I've done reviews on. Um, subscribe to the channel and uh, we will catch you later. Adios.